so uh, the next session quick and dirty test statistics so jerry is not with me uh, jerry is supposed to start this session uh, any idea who is this guy or have you heard about principle of factor sparsity any one head of 8020 rule yeah actually the same guy so his name is uh, Wilfredo per Pareto. So it's uh, the 80 rule, also known as Pareto principle. So basically, it means that 80% uh, of the effects coming from 20% of the causes. It's like, uh, if you fix 20% of the issues, maybe you can achieve 80% of the test cases. So every day, our test cases were failing and we need to collect all the data and we need to analyze why it's failed. Okay. So sometimes uh, maybe when you analyze, you will find that if you fix something, it will fix maybe all the other tests. But we need to collect all the data and we need to analyze uh, the test trends like uh, what's the most failing test cases, what's the most successful test cases and the root cause of the common failure issues. So you need a database to collect all these things, right? So every day you need to pull the data from your test result and you need to store somewhere. Then only you can do the analysis, correct? So basically this is why you need to collect the data. So it will help you to fix the flaky test, first one. It will give you some statistics like how many success, how many failure most failing and most successful test. How to do it? So we were using uh, AWS evaluation and we found that the AWS API, SDK APIs are super cool. So it uses the Boto3. So we were using Python and it support a number of other programming languages like this. So it's quite easy. You can just uh, create a uh, Boto three object and you can call all the API. You can fetch all the test result and you can do whatever be the analysis you need. So this is an example. Um, it's like you instantiate a client and you can list all the your projects. So it's like we had uh, multiple test runs like for the regression you have one project, for the smoke test you have another project. So you can have any projects you want. So if you want to get all the data, you can call something like this. So you can get the project object and you can pass, uh, this is my run ID and get me all the details from that. So you can get the suit as well. So all the test run will have it suit. So there will be a suit ID for all the runs. So from the suit ID, you can get like whether it's passed, whether it's skipped, whether it's failed, all the information you need. Likewise, you can get the result also, like the log files. So before we use this one, uh, what we used to do, like uh, we used to assign one QA member. So we used to go to the AWS web URL, download all the failing log file. I need to look at why it's failed, and we need to go to an Excel sheet and mark it. Then it's like there were at least 20 to 30 test cases were failing. Imagine you are downloading 30 logs fail every day and you are opening it and seeing why it's failed and filling up the Excel sheet. So it was a boring job and everyone was doing it. Then, uh, so this job we allocated to one QA every day. So it was Jerry's turn. So Jerry went to home and he said it's a boring job. So he automated it. So how you can do it? So it's already available on GitHub. So basically what it do. Yeah. So you create an uh, AWS bot object and pass your project name here. And you get the project ID. And from there, you get all the run ID. Then you pass the run ID. And you get all the de uh, details like which in which device you run that uh, you run this particular job, which all test suits you have run. Uh, we were using Cucumber, so we just fetching the feature file name. Then when it's started, the name of the scenario, and uh, you just 
log all the stuff and you just call a Google Sheet API, it will auto fill it. So we were using Gspread to handle with the uh, updating the Google Sheet. So I can give you a demo. So just hard coded the run ID, so it will fetch only one run ID. It will take some time. Uh, it's uh, not only the case with AWS, whatever be the cloud service provider you use, they will be getting giving you such kind of API similar like this. So it's quite important to collect all the test result and you need to analyze it. So it's fetching and if you look at the Excel sheet, it auto filling. So basically I'm collecting the start time, feature scenario, execution time, who's responsible for device name, all the information. So uh, we did something on the top of it, like we just created some Excel macros and it will give you the scenarios like, which is the most failing one, most passed one. So by looking at this high level overview, you can have a look at like, okay, I need to work, I need to fix this one. This is the most failing scenarios. This has most critical one. So you, if you fix it, then it can fix some other test also. So uh, one cool thing is that it will give you the exception details also. Like for example, some of the assertion fail and this one failed due to, yeah, cooked by some of the button is not visible over there. So you can simply say that because of this issue, the same issue happened on the, uh, for, uh, the next scenario also. So it means that if you fix this one, I can easily fix the other scenarios also. So if you are going to do it individually by taking everything, then it's gonna take some time and it will kill your time, right? So it will always good that uh, you need to create something like test statistics like this. And it always good that if your management asks you, okay, so just give me some dashboard on what all test cases are failing now. So what the statistics, now you can easily just show this one. Uh, this is not a perfect system, but it's like, it's better if you can create a web application like this, but for an easy purpose, Excel sheet is good enough. So I've already uh, open sourced it. You guys can have a look at this one. So you just need some small configuration like uh, uh, some setup need to be done for both or some credentials and config need to be done. And for the Google Sheet API, you need to download one JSON file from the, uh, the credentials.json in order to communicate with the Google Sheet. That's it. I uh, think not all the steps, but almost, yeah. You can just have a look at the link, so it, it, it has some examples, so you can have a look at it, yeah. Did you try to use Azure reports? Uh, not with this one, but have used it, yes. Because it can do the same Yeah, yeah, or? yes, uh, but uh, yeah, exactly. So basically, Azure can be integrated with this one but we are thinking about having our own database and a web application for this one. So you can do much things like, I need to select a date range of date, then I get the statistics from within that range. Such things will be quite difficult to done with the Allure reports. Okay. Yeah. Maybe if we could push this into Kibana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, just a quick implementation. It's because uh, Jerry done this is because he don't want to do it manually. So I thought I'd just share in this to everyone. Yeah. Any questions? Oh, you guys are in the uh, Slack channel. Everyone is in the Slack channel. Okay, so what you can do, you can go to this URL, Singapore API Meetup hyphen Slack. Can you share a QR code maybe? <laughs> okay, tick, tick, tick. Oh, I can out. Oh no. How can I? <laughs> Online generate QR code. Yes. Which one? Generate QR code just. Oh. Oh, you can use Bitly for example. 
<laughs> no, this is also okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can scan this one. Yes. Oh, where did it go? No, too much. Yeah. Any questions? We're supposed to have one more session, which is a discussion. So if you would, li would like to continue, we can have any discussion related to APM. Uh, we can have the discussion for another 20 minutes. Yeah. So how many of you guys use uh, any Device farm? So. It's not really about device farm. It's, so mostly uh, at Lazada, at least. I worked before at Lazada, so most so uh, I worked before in Lazada company. I was the team leader of um, mobile automation team. So mostly we used uh, simulators for automation, several real devices just to have a little bit faster tests because we had about 200 tests for Android, about 150 tests for iOS, and yeah, it takes a lot of time, because Lazada works in six countries, and for each country we have some special features, so almost every test has to be executed at least six times. So, it's yeah, you can multiply 200 tests for Android six times, we had a huge amount of tests to execute, uh, so, uh, we try to use clouds, uh, but when we find out the real price for our requirements, uh, because we was not able to use public cloud, we had to use everything on our own. So, Bitbar made us an offer as about 11,000 US dollars per month to have private cloud for our purposes to be able to execute all our tests. <laughs> yeah, so... We decided just to increase our uh, device level up uh, by ourselves, by devices, because it will be much cheaper in, uh, in closest perspectives. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else want to share their you know, current problems? Or Hi. Uh, so for SPH, we are just starting up with the automation framework. So that is one of the reasons why I actually came over here. So yeah, that is, uh, and we have the, uh, we are using AWS as well. So, um, but uh, we do see that there are already available uh, CI/CD CIC, CIC tools like uh, BitRise, then Cloud CI. So yeah, that was one reason why I was asking you about why you were actually going for AWS. Uh, uh, only. So. Yeah, I mean, as I as I mentioned that uh, we we did evaluate a lot many things, and but this was one of the most flexible what we found that we can just plug and play any devices and and stuff. It was we can ramp up and ramp down quickly whenever we need or we don't. Need. Yeah. So it was much more flexible. Anyway. Yeah, because uh, even for uh, for me uh, when I'm writing now the automation framework. Uh, Although, uh, so initially I started with like everything, Cucumber, DestNJ, APM, APM, uh, all of them together. But yeah, before going further, I just wanted to build up the framework first and then start with the test, the script. So yeah, so yeah, those were, I mean, the, there are certain challenges that I'm going through now. So which tools to start using, like, uh, just like AWS, which I was not aware of, like they don't support Cucumber. Am I going to face any other challenges with uh, the other cloud applications that I'm not sure of? Uh, so, so like what Martin said, right? Yeah. Uh, it's all about software. We can tweak, yeah. and there will be always work around, and we can we can put it in. So basically, um, we basically like he said, right? Uh, for for him, it was easier for simulators, and it worked well. 
but uh, for us we had difficulties with simulators we opted this route so basically it's not one solution for all it would never be like that you have to see what your company needs what was their demand was their i mean everything and then based on that you decide what tools to use whether maybe for you aws won't be an option maybe it would be only option you never know but based on your requirement your need for us we wanted a lot of devices and different devices to work with with a variety whenever we want i mean yeah i think the good part is almost all of them allow you to uh to test it so if you're looking if you're in the process of deciding which which tools you should go for you can demo you can demo them you make a poc see what what fits you that's basically what we did we uh, made a poc for i think six different solutions and then figured out okay which which route which route do we want to take so i would really advise you to first see if you can narrow it down to maybe two or three but then get in touch with them and they give you uh like aws will give you free um free minutes to to do some testing all the others will give you free credits as well and you can actually do quite a lot and then figure out if you encounter any difficulties or any roadblocks and then you can make a much uh, much better much easier uh, decision also yeah basically just adding on that uh, what you can do you can create your own acceptance criteria to evaluate all the service providers and you need to as measure this against the service providers so what we have done we have created a couple of not couple of almost 15 to 16 acceptance criteria and we were giving uh, green amber and red signals to that one and we were counting which one suit us more based on what we really needed yeah thank you Do you guys cool. still uh, maintain a uh, an in-house lab of actual devices for sort of manual testing? Uh, so we do have, but we don't maintain it anymore. I mean, like we st it still runs, uh, but uh, we are not really actively looking at it. Like it fails once the problem is solved, it will fail and it will run again. Um, I think we, we basically we still have the devices, but we don't really use it for <coughs> automation. It's more of when we want to reproduce some some bugs, we have the devices uh, on on site to do manual testing. Yeah, and we also use them for uh, <coughs> Appium testing on our local machine for development, or also for uh, for reproducing bugs. But it's not in a way that we have a, a proper setup device farm, like you saw in the picture. This is no longer no longer in place it's still there but it doesn't have any phones more decoration mm, yeah maybe if you have more than two three products in your company and you if you want to test all these products then maybe in-house device lab may be an option to you but if you have only one single product you can think about the cloud solutions um, imagine you have five products and you are testing it so on you are selecting aws you are paying this much money and time there are some cloud solutions which will charge you based on how much time you use, not really unlimited stuff. So that would be not be suitable for you in that case. And if you talk about some test cases like you need to enable the Bluetooth and other some special stuff like uh, scanning an eye or something like that, you cannot simply do it on cloud solution, right? So if that test case is very important to you, then you need to have an in-house device lab. How many like tests do you have, guys? And what is the percentage? Coverage. Yeah. No, not coverage. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, how many uh, too many like tests? How many unstable tests from the all amount of tests? Now it's like uh, 90 to 90 percentage of passing. There are five percentage of unstable tests. How much time do you have to solve all this? We tried eight slots, right? Eight slots, then it's take 40 to 45 oh yeah so basically this whole project is going on for most of the second quarter so almost three months oh yeah where we're not only working on fixing tests but 
to a large extent. Yeah. Is it both of them? Is it API test or UI test or whatever? Oh, it's UI test. UI test. Yeah. UI. Yeah. But we are using API also in between as a sandwich. Like, for example, for Carousel, everyone know you need to list an item, right? So, uh, to test the bump, bump functionality, you really don't need to care how you create the item. So what we do, we create the item using API, and we take it from there in, using the UI. So it will give you much faster feedback. So, and you really don't need to test all the other steps like clicking on camera, filling up the form, and submitting the button, listing the listing button. Everything you really don't need to test. So it kind of a mix of both API and user interfaces. So do you, uh, when you evaluate the so-called cloud provider, do you evaluate also like uh, the device part from experiment test? No, we didn't start expert test, right? We didn't. We didn't. Do you yeah. have the actual Excel sheet that you actually created? Like the acceptance criteria? Acceptance like? criteria. Uh, we have. We have. Yeah, I mean, if you want, I mean, Sham can yeah. share it. Yeah. Not like Excel sheet, but you can share the acceptance criteria. Yeah. yeah. What, uh, yes. Okay, so basically for SPH, because it's, um, it's having 40 applications, probably for the application, but most of them are quite mature, already hmm. there in the market. So we are uh, most of the time focusing on the performance of the application that we already have. So yeah, that is uh, that is one reason actually. Uh, because you're saying that uh, if you have multiple applications, you should have our own device. No, no, it's not exactly like that. What he's trying to say is like uh, every uh, company, uh, like for you, right? For the application, but. Not every application would be updated every day. Not every application would be, you know, uh, developed every single day, right? It would be for the application, yes, but few application only updates once a month. Then you don't need testing every t t to test it every time. Only when it's being released or something like that, or maybe once per week or sort of that. But certain application, maybe the news application which is PH has, maybe that would be frequently updated, and that that would be the main application. You can start with that. And these, it's not that AWS, you cannot have multiple applications. You can have uh, different applications. It based on you, how do you use it? So you can upload any APK and it will run it. So the $250 per month is for any number of devices? Uh, $250 for one slot and one slot is one concurrent execution. But you can run a test on one device and then once it's finished, you run against another device on the same slot. So you're not uh, stuck with one type of device or with one model. If you want to have multiple models and run it at the same time, then you need multiple slots. But if you have enough time, let's say you want to run against three different uh, device models, and you have enough time to run them uh, sequentially, one after the other, then one slot is, is good enough. So one slot doesn't say it has to be one particular device. Uh, what you can also do, um, Sean was mentioning some, are, some providers are charging for minutes, others for slots. Uh, I think AWS also has both. You can also uh, say I don't want to have any slots, I just pay for it and for the number of minutes I use. And that again depends on how much do you use it. So we figured for us the slot approach is, uh, is better. Any more questions? Any more questions? So it will be great if you can give your feedback. OK, so I have pasted the link in the Slack channel. Just please feel free to fill up this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everyone is in the Slack channel, right? So everyone can access this link. So it's already here.
you need a QR code? I don't think. Yeah. Okay. Here is a QR code if you need. Yeah. You have given the access to everyone, right? Yeah. I have just separate machines with simulators. So I start simulator, run test, make some potential, close the simulator. 